One of the first things that you want to learn when you're getting into game development is how to make some doors open. And we can do this very simply using an animator and a small bit of coding, as well as a trigger collider. So sometimes this is referred to as a trigger zone as well, so if you hear that, then it's the same thing. So in this scene, we've got a basic floor, we've got a couple of walls, uh, which are marked as static, so that the physics knows that it's gonna stay still. And then we've got two door cubes that I've kind of extruded uh, in the Z and in the Y to a value of two. So they're just sat there right now, not doing anything at all. So the first thing I'm going to do, because we want to um, move these independently, we're gonna put them under a parent object. So I'm gonna create an empty object and I'm gonna call this door parent. And I'm gonna reset the position. So that's basically placing this empty object um, right at the center of the world and we're gonna parent these two doors under it. So basically wherever I then move the door parent, these doors will move with it. And that means that when you're animating, those animations will be relative to wherever the parent is. So I'm gonna drag and drop these onto the parent. And because I'm going to be animating the door left and right, we need to have rigid body components on these. So I'm gonna add a rigid body on each of those. I'm not gonna use gravity because uh, we don't want them to just fall down. And we do want to check is kinematic because we don't want the doors to be affected by any other physics forces or interactions with anything. So we don't want the colliders on the walls to interfere with the doors. So we're gonna check is kinematic to make sure that they don't receive any physics forces, but we will be able to animate them. Next, um, because I'm gonna animate the child objects of this, I'm gonna add an animator component. So I select my door parent and I'm gonna say animator, add that in there. And I need to make a controller for this. So I'm gonna to go to create in the project and call this doors, drop it onto my door parent. That will assign it to the doors controller. And then I'm ready to animate these two. So I'm gonna need three animation clips or states for this particular thing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to make an idle clip. So in my assets, we can make an animation folder. And I'm gonna call this one door idle. So basically all this is doing is it's gonna act as a kind of idle or empty status. Um, we're not gonna move the doors in the idle, they're not gonna be doing anything at all, but we need an idle state to go back to. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make a door open. So again, I'm adding a clip and I'm gonna save that into my animation folder. And this time I'm gonna animate my doors. So when I go to add curve, you'll notice that it's got the two components from this object and it's got each child object as well, door left and door right. So I'm gonna start with door left. So there's two ways I can approach this animation. I can add a curve for door left, transform, position. And I could go ahead and start messing around with that. Or I can use the automatic keyframing. So if I move my playheads to one second and select my left hand door, I can drag that to where I want it to be at the end of the animation. And I can grab my right door, drag that to the end where I want it to be at the end of the clip. And you can see it's added those values and done the keyframing for me. So when I drag over, I've got my door opening animation. Then I can switch off record mode and I can make my door closing. So I go to uh, add new clip once more, go to door close, choose my animation folder to save it into, and I'm gonna do the same process. But this time I'm gonna start with the doors open. So on the first frame, I'm gonna drag those to where they were. And then I'm gonna move the playheads to frame one and move them back to closed. Now I know that the exact position for this should be zero and in my right door, the exact position for this should be one because that's where those two started. So I can then drag that and you can see that on the last keyframe, they're going to where they need to be. So I've now got three clips. If I save my scene, it switches off record mode for me and you can see I've got door idle, open and close. Now, if I double click on my animator, you can see that each clip I make gets added to the animator for me. 
So the controller that I've applied to my doors, the doors controller, gets each of these clips put in there. And this is perfect. So I've got my door idle, door open and door close, and I need to make logic for these states. So this is a state machine, which means that I can go between these different clips dependent on some logic. And that logic is driven by these parameters. So all that I need to do is make two triggers, which is basically a parameter that gets set to true and resets itself to false. One for opening and one for closing. And I'm going to right click on my door idle and make a transition to door open. I'm gonna set the condition for that to open. And I'm going to make a transition, right click on door open, click on door close, and set the condition for that to close. Then finally, because I want this to go back to idle once it's closed, I right click make transition, and the condition for this, I'm just leaving on exit time, which is the default. Then finally, one more thing to do, if I select my animations, I'll notice if I select each one, that by default, loop time is checked. So I don't want it to loop the closing or the opening, I just want it to loop the idling. So I've unchecked on close and open and I've left it checked on idle. So to make this actually work, we just need a script that's gonna be in charge of setting these trigger parameters to uh, trigger the transition from idle to open and open to close. So what we do is select our door parent and the first thing we're gonna do is to put on a trigger zone or trigger collider. So we go to add component and I'm gonna use a box collider for this. So on our empty object, we've added on a box collider and we're going to basically rescale this. So we want to make it so that it's basically overlapping in front of the door. so that when the player or whatever character moves up to it, it's gonna open the door before they bump into the door. So we need to also check is trigger to make sure it's a trigger, it's not gonna be uh, an actual volume that they bump into. Then what we're going to do is to write a script to detect when the player is detected within this trigger. So I'm gonna say add component, and I'm gonna say new script. And I'm gonna call this doors. I'll click create and add, and then double click on the script to open it up in mono develop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to get rid of those two functions, and then I'm ready to start writing my script. So the first thing that I need is a reference to my animator. So that's the thing with the state machine, the controller of this inside. So I make a private reference of type animator, and I'm gonna call it animator. So notice the difference between capitalized animator and my actual variable name animator. So the capitalized one is the type. And then I need a Boolean, which I'm gonna be calling door open. So this is a true false, just to check if we've already opened the doors. Then in start, so when the scene begins, I'm gonna set my door open true false variable to false. Just to ensure that it's definitely set and then I'm gonna assign the actual animator component to my variable. So I'm gonna say animator is equal to get component animator. So it's gonna look on that game object for an, a component of type animator and assign it to that variable. Then because we are checking when something enters the trigger zone, we need to write an on trigger enter function. So this function has a single argument, which is of type collider. So we pass in a collider type variable. And we're gonna give this a name, I'm just gonna call it col. So remember that's a variable name, so you can call it whatever you like. And you can then query that to find out which collider has just overlapped this trigger. So we're gonna say if col.gameObject.tag and we're gonna use tag to identify the player. And we're gonna say, if it's a tag called player, then we're gonna do something. So we check the collider that's intersected, we check the game object that collider is attached to, and we check the tag on that game object, which we're expecting to be player. We set our door open boolean to be true, so that we can check that. 
and then we're going to write a function to open the doors. So I'm going to move down below my on trigger enter and I'm going to write a function called doors. And I'm going to give this one argument which is a string. So because our trigger parameters open and close are just strings, we can send either the word open or close to this controller in order to control it. So that's exactly what we're doing here. So I'm going to call this direction because it's either opening or closing. And I'm going to pass in what I want to happen. So I'm going to use that variable direction and I'm going to pass it to my animator and I'm going to say set trigger. So just to remind you, the trigger parameters have nothing to do with the trigger collider. The trigger parameters are triggering off different states in the animator, whereas the trigger collider is simply a volume that you can detect things within. So we're going to set the trigger, and usually what we would do here is say, OK, we'll set the open trigger. But instead, we're going to pass in the value to the direction variable. Then up here, because we are detecting something entering the trigger, we're expecting the doors to open when the player enters the trigger. So we can call our doors function and we're going to pass in a string to the direction variable. So this one is going to be open. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for exiting. So I'm just going to resize my script editor and I'm going to say void on trigger exit. Again, this takes the same type. So I'm going to use the same variable name. It's not going to conflict at all. So I'm going to say, if the doors are already open, so we're using that little boolean that we made earlier. So if they're open, then we are able to close them. So first I'm going to reset that. I'm going to say that door open is now false. And I'm going to call my doors function again, and this time send it the trigger parameter close, which remember will cause the state machine to transition from door open animation to door closing animation. And that's basically it. So just to recap, we made a private animator reference, we made a private boolean, then we made a start function to set these and get the component of the animator, and then we've got on trigger enter, which is calling our doors function. And within that doors function, we receive a string. So we send the word open or close to the direction variable. And then we address our animator and say, set the trigger, i.e. these two parameters, to either open or close. And that will control our state machine. So I'm going to save my script, return to Unity. And of course, like a fool, I've named my function the same as my class, which I can't do. Um, so I'm just going to call this door control and I'm going to change my references to that function and that will fix that. Okay, so now I've made sure that my script is attached. Now all we need is a player game object. So I'm just going to create a cube. And I basically want this to fall down and enter that trigger zone. So very simply, I'm just going to add a rigid body with gravity that's going to fall and overlap that. And we know that we want this to be the player, so I'm going to rename it. And also, crucially, I need to give it the tag player because that's what we're checking for in our script. So just to remind you, our script is expecting game object tag player. So I'm going to save my scene now, and I'm going to press play. So we can see that as the player falls down, the doors are caused to open because our player is overlapping our trigger zone. Then if we move the player back out, the doors will close. And that's how you make a pair of doors.